Hi guys and girls on YouTube and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to be showing you what's another quite common fault on flat screen TVs. Right, so on the bench I've got this 32 inch flat screen TV and it has quite a peculiar fault. Now if I turn it on at the mains, um, you'll see that there the standby lights come on. Um, if I press the power button on the remote control, it's actually come out of standby, uh, but the TV has not come on, uh, the backlights aren't lit. And if I press the power button on the remote control again, I can no longer put it back into standby. Right, so what we're going to be looking at here is this little three terminal regulator uh, now this is a 1.2 volt output low dropout regulator so if i measure the input going in um you can see we've got 3.278 volts going in so that would be a 3.3 volt rail now if we measure the output there you can actually see we've got 1.234 volts coming out so that's a 1.2 volt regulator um you would think that that regulator's okay because it's got the right output voltage. Right, so we've actually established that the regulator has the right output. Now what we need to do is we need to bring the oscilloscope into uh, play and we need to check the output of the regulator. So, if I put the scope on there, that's the output. And then if we look at the scope, you'll see that the output of the regulator is actually oscillating round about 10 megs. Right, so I've drawn this simple diagram. There's the regulator. Um, now, with these um, three terminal regulators, it's very, very essential that they're properly decoupled on the input and the output. And if they're not properly decoupled, then what they do is they burst into oscillation. And that's what we can see across the supply line. The chances are either one or both of these capacitors will be faulty. Um, now, this is probably 1.2 volt. It's probably supplying the microcontroller. Um, which further down the line, the microcontroller will have its own input decoupling capacitor there. So what we need to do is we need to measure these. Um, now, ideally, you need to measure these out of circuit, and we'll come to that in a minute. Um, because it's also decoupled further down the line, if we measure this in circuit here and here, um, we're actually measuring this capacitor in parallel with this one. So the chances are this will give a good reading in circuit and you could easily think that this capacitor is okay when I think it's faulty. So let's just set up an ESR meter and have a look. Right, so as you can see there, I've marked the two capacitors in question. Uh, now we'll get an ESR meter and we'll measure them in circuit. Right, it's diff difficult to hold the camera at the same time, but that's one we're on. Um, I've measured that and that measures uh, 0.16 ohm. Um, which for a 100 microfarad capacitor, that's probably right. Now let's try the other one. Right, so that's the other one, uh, and that in circuit is measuring uh, 0.68 ohm. Now, um, on the basis, on the, on the balance of it, that does look okay. In fact, they both look okay, but let's take them out and see what they read. And uh, also, uh, I'll show you another fault finding tip. Right, because I can't hold the camera at the same time as do this, I've had to connect the capacitor with a pair of crocodile clips. So now let's try the capacitors we took out that measured reasonably okay when they were in circuit. So straight away you can see now the effective series resistance of that is more than 40 ohms. Oh, hang on, the button's stuck. Right, that's more than 40 ohms. So let's unclip that and try the other one. Right, so that's the other one. Press the button. And as you can see, the um, series resistance of that one is also more than 40 ohms. Um, so like I said, testing these in circuit is no good because 
These are local decoupling capacitors which have to be placed as close to the regulator as possible. We're actually measuring this in parallel with the ones further downstream um, and that's the problem. So um, let me show you another way of finding this fault if you don't have an oscilloscope. Right now for this little demonstration I'm going to be using my homemade ESR meter um, and there's quite a good reason for that. Um, the peak ones if you've got this one it only takes a reading when you press the button if you've got this one it only takes a reading when you test uh, when you touch the prods on the capacitor uh, but with mine it takes a continuous reading so i've set the capacitor in there as you can see the impedance is well above 40 ohms and um, let's just get a hair dryer now and see what happens to that capacitor when we heat it up right now this might take a little while to demonstrate because this hairdryer is only a travel one um, if you can see it's not much bigger than the peak meter so let's start let's uh, see what happens now when we warm up this capacitor So as you can see, as we heat the capacitor, it improves. Now let's try cooling it down with a tin of freezer. And there we go. The uh, effective series resistance has gone up again. Um, so as you can see, you don't necessarily need an oscilloscope to find this fault. Just a hairdryer and a tin of freezer would do. Um, but at the price of this, over £20 a tin, um, if you're going to be doing a lot of these, you might be better investing in an oscilloscope. Right, so let's just replace these caps with a, a couple of new ones and then uh, we'll turn it on and see what happens. Right, so there we go. Put the old telly back together, switched on at the mains. As you can see, it's coming in standby. Press the button on the remote control. Let's come out to standby. And there we go, that's Tally on. And uh, if I press the button again, we can actually put it back into standby now with the remote control. Right guys and girls, so that's my tip of the day. You get a fault on the TV, um, don't just assume because you've measured the output of the regulator and it's correct that everything's in order. Um, you need to check the supply rails to make sure they're not oscillating or uh, do the hair dryer trick if you haven't got an oscilloscope. If you warm it up, if you warm these capacitors up and the telly comes on, you've found the fault. All right, guys and girls, many thanks for watching my video and um, I'll catch you in the next video.